My name is Ella Levi, and um, my mother always told me the story of what happened. She was cooking dinner and had things in the oven, and there was a knock on the door, and the neighbor came in, a woman neighbor. They weren't friendly, friendly, but she, she saw her from time to time. She came in and said to her, you have to leave. You and your family should leave because tonight I hear that the German troops are coming to go through the district. So you should be leaving, get your family out. My mother said to her, oh, thank you so much for telling me. Thank you, I don't know how to thank you. And, and the woman said to her, that's okay. You know, I always loved the earrings that you had, I always admired the earrings that you had in your ear all the time. And she said, right away, without even saying you want them, she put her hand up to her ears and took them out and gave them to the lady and said, thank you again. And uh, she closed the oven, she said. She got some stuff together. And she said they, she knew she had to leave. My name is Rakitza Levy Gilio. I was born in Zagreb on April 29, 1937. My childhood memories of Zagreb are my Sunday walks with my parents, where we went along the uh, Zagreb promenade and looked at all the stores and enjoyed that kind of a little leisure on Sunday afternoon. My father liked to I guess sail or swim or what have you. And he owned a little or owned or rented a little boat and we used to go out in the water a lot. And I learned how to swim in the Adriatic Sea. So it was all right until they started getting rumors that the Nazis were gonna start invading Yugoslavia. Since dad had to start wearing the Star of David, he was picked up off the street and brought to Nazi headquarters for inquisition. A lot of the Croatians joined the Nazi army because they didn't want to be in any kind of trouble. So when dad went up there for inquiry, the person behind the desk was a schoolmate of his. So he said to him, Joe, what are you, what are you doing here? And he said, well, I got picked up. So he said, listen, Joe, he said, I'm going to let you go. Get out of Yugoslavia. And I th think that's how the wheels started turning for my father to decide to, to leave. And somehow or other, the situation got worse and worse. And I remember my mom telling me that dad came home from his shop one day. And he said to her, Mary, he said, we have to leave. We have to leave. We have to leave before the Nazis marched in. And that's how the journey started. We, my mother claimed that we left food on the table, food on the stove, took whatever we had, clothes on the back and whatnot, and left Zagreb. My name is David Levi. I was born November 23, 1937, in Zagreb, Yugoslavia then. My father and I uh, lived in Zagreb, and uh, we had to make our way uh, through mount mountainous terrain and forests uh, to the uh, port of uh, Bari. Uh, during that trek from Zagreb to Bari, uh, I would walk along with my father. Typically after dark, I would get tired at some times. And with that happening, my father carried a, uh, a uh, burlap bag, okay, which he would place me in, haul me over his back, and carry me for as long as he could. And then we would rest for a while, and then he would let me out of the bag, and I would continue walking. And we finally made our way to Bari. We were in Italy for a while. Italy was, even though it was, the borders were open and they were friendly, a lot of the Jewish people went into hiding. The Italians used to keep them in the house and hide them. My father was hidden in the monastery. I got very sick. I got very sick when I had diphtheria or typhus. One or the other was very contagious disease. And my mother had to take me to the hospital. Went in the hospital. She could not say I was Jewish. She could not expose my father who was hiding there. So she said I was Catholic and I was so, so sick that they gave me the last rites, 
and they baptized me. They thought I would never get well. Hitler wanted to march into Italy. He knew a lot of Jewish people were hiding there and clean it up. And that's why the Henry Gibbons came about. We made our way to Naples where the uh, boat to the U.S. was docked. There were 1,000 spaces on the boat and 3,000 applicants. There was not to be any separation of family in a, a group. They had to sign a document which uh, ascertained that uh, they would be repatriated, if accepted, would be repatriated to the countries of origin at the end of the war. Well, my mom befriended an Italian soldier who gave her passes, gave her applications. She, they filled them out. And once we got to Naples, we went through the whole thing to get on the ship. And they gave, they gave everybody a little tag that said, government, U.S. baggage, U.S. baggage. That's the only piece of identification any of us had was United States government baggage to get us aboard the ship. We stayed on the ship for the voyage. I think the voyage took a week, a little bit more than a week. And then we wound up in the port of New York. And at that point, we weren't allowed to disembark till we had 24-hour clearance. And what they did, all the refugees got off the ship and went to supposedly a, a, a barracks that was set up. And there they were looked over, their clothes were disinfected. I mean, then they had no, the same way they probably did in Ellis Island to make sure whoever entered the country was fine. And from there, we got on the train and came to Port Ontario, Oswego, where they prepared the, the camp for us. And we got off the train and I remember my dad saying, Look at the barbed wire. He said they didn't put us in the concentration camp, but they put us here. I'm standing in the same spot where the train came in on August 5th. 1944. The children were very, very friendly. There was a little girl that handed a bike over to a little boy on the other side of the fence. And uh, I remember that everybody was a little frightened by the fence when they came. And being seven, I didn't realize the whole concept of everything that was going on. But we were taken care of by the government. We had dentists who take care of our medical needs. Mom had all her teeth pulled. Whether or not they gave her teeth again, I don't know. <laughs> I remember having chicken pox, being confined to the barrack. And I remember my mother opening the curtain a little bit, and I'm pulling the curtain because I wanted to see the lake because our barrack was very close to the lake. It was constantly cold. And I, she said to me, you can't do that, you can't do that because your eyes, your eyes, they believe the chicken pox would affect your eyes. My mother always told me the story of what happened. She went to the movies here in Fort uh, Ontario, Oswego, to see Les Mis with my father, Les Miserables. And that was a drama, it was very serious and very long. And they were in the movie and she started to have labor pains. And she was pregnant, but she kept quiet. She just said, I was uncomfortable, but I didn't want to tell dad to let's go. We stayed till the end of the film. She said, I'll never forget that film for that reason. And she said that, uh, that after it was finished, they walked over to the hospital because it wasn't too far from where the theater was. And um, that's, they came to the hospital and that's where I ended up being born and started my life here in Fort Ontario and my parents started their lives in America. I love water, so it's a kind of appropriate that a swimming pool is standing where the hospital was many years ago. 
This is a picture of five babies. This is my mother Mary, and this is me. These are the five babies of 23 that were born here on the premises of Port Ontario Oswego. We lived the next year and a half here on the 75 acres of Fort Ontario, and uh, we had a good experience here. And then we found out that uh, we were supposed to be sent back because the war was over and they wanted to send all of us back. They only housed us for, for a year. So after the war, uh, the shelter was to be closed down and the question of uh, whether to send the thousand back to their countries of origin or keep them, let them have a choice of either staying here, the ones that wanted to, and felt they had nothing else to go, for one reason, go back to anything in the old country, and the, the other ones that actually wanted to go back. Joseph Smart, together with Eleanor Roosevelt, were very adamant about allowing the thousand to remain here in the United States. At that point, when the camp started closing, they had an agency called Hyas, which helped, helped them get established, found them apartments, and found them jobs, and we wound up in New York. At 18, I got married, and I have been married 63 years. I have three children, six grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. I worked for a good company that was good with me for pension, and now I'm living comfortably <laughs> for uh, the last couple of years, and it's been good. This country's been good to me, and I'm happy that my dad did the plunge and went. <laughs> <laughs>